um, like especially wetter. Um, it's very, I got, I had a really good timing. Um, so, and um, a lot of it is just perseverance and luck. So we, after you guys graduate, you will find that it's pretty difficult to find a job. Um, there's not a lot of things available. Um, so let me just quickly show you guys. Um, so um, you'll notice that a lot of the, when you look for jobs, um, when you start looking for jobs, you're gonna notice a lot of entry role jobs um, are quite wet, rare in almost all countries except for the US and Canada. A lot of entry roles are gonna be in US and Canada, but for New Zealand, Australia, um, other places, even like the um, some Asian countries as well, um, a lot of them aren't gonna be entry level friendly. So it's really hard for when, once you graduate to actually be able to find a job. Um, and also most jobs will be, I think, yeah, actually all the jobs will be contract based. Um, so instead of doing salary work, so say you earn 50K a year, it's on, you'll only really be calculating it per hour. Um, and it's very normal to pick up a contract and then say you do your job and then um, you don't have any jobs for the next couple of months. And that downtime is really normal. And um, I just wanted to start this like presentation with all the bad news because um, I think that's the, like that you know, and then like slowly I'll kind of build up to how you can overcome all these problems because um, you know obviously being unemployed is really hard and tough at first um, but I think the main thing is to just keep yourself dedicated and keep yourself um, patient you know like really um, persevere through the tough times um, because it definitely just gets harder once you get out of um, uni it doesn't get any better in fact yeah it because um, you know if you think about it in uni you know you you people you pay people to give you a degree but then you know with jobs and everything it's all a business do you know what I mean so like um you know people pay you instead so you know things that you know tables turn so you know things change quite a bit um but um here's a really quick um just I just want to go through this really quickly I just added this in as well but this is a really typical job advertisement so um you would notice immediately I just had it here it's not entry level um, it's not entry level. So they will always usually say you need at least one or two years or even three years um, experience for this certain role, which is asset artist, which is just modeling, texturing and surfacing. So um, um, yeah, so like this is very typical. You will find entry level jobs and they'll just say no experience required or maybe only um, one experience required. If it's one year, um, year experience, I would still apply myself. Um, but then there's just some certain things um, and it's really good for you guys to just look up like job advertisements and just have an idea of what they're looking for as well, just so you can carry on working towards that while you're studying. So like things like, um, um, you know, it's things like, it's like, yeah, like Maya, Zebra, Shamari, learning all these, like just know, you don't have to learn the softwares, but even just know what they do is really handy. Um, and then, um, also, like I highlighted it some like people skills, you know, some social skills that are really important. So um, the ability to take direction, implement feedback and with a positive attitude. This is definitely a really important one. So like, um, you know, take feedback, take criticism because you're still learning. Of course, like I'm still I'm still definitely learning outside, um, you know, of uni. I'm, I'm learning the most I have ever done um, just trying to do the work that I'm given. Um, and so, you know, you have to really keep that mindset up is that you're always going to be learning throughout your whole career because technology is always going to be changing, right? So like say innate desire to stay informed of current technologies, you know, technology is always going to be improving. It's always going to be um, like changing. So you have to really adapt to that. So don't think you're, <laughs> you have to like, you're going to stop learning and it's all going to be easy after you graduate um, in the job. If anything, you have to probably learn even more. Um, yeah, and just be a approachable, proactive, um, and an accommodating person. So, um, you know, again, just listening to feedback. And that is really important because when you do get into the industry, if you are interested in getting into the industry, of course, because what I say is might not be completely, um, you know, rel like applicable to everyone because, um, you know, maybe you don't want to get into the industry. You can do freelance, of course. You can do, um, you can start your own business. So everything is, you know, all that is only if you want to get into um, a bigger studio and work for a company. Um, 
Um, and yeah, but in saying that, a lot of um, it being in a big studio, it's all teamwork. Do you know what I mean? Uh, it's really important that I listen to everyone um, and that I take all that feedback. And I don't take anything personally. Do you know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, they only really want, um, they're only telling me how I can improve my work because, you know, they want the, you know, the, the project to end up looking the best it can. So, you know, it makes sense at the end of the day. It's just, it's just work. It, so don't take it personally, even though it's creative, because a, a lot of time I know people get very attached to their creative work, but I think it's really important to keep very, like, to stay very practical because, you know, with our course, it's very artistic and it's very technical, but um, we, all of us, most of us, probably like come into the course thinking we have a really good artistic skill, like maybe we're really good at drawing and we really appreciate photography and um, film or all that. But then it's, I think it's really important to balance that out with the technical side of things because um, digital design is very technical. It is very computer and IT related as well. So being able to balance these two together is what really makes you good um, later on um, in like this field. Yeah, but so in saying all that, it, it might sound very disheartening that, you know, you're going to find out, oh, shit, when I graduate, I'm not going to be able to find a job. What am I going to do? And that was me all last year because no one told me that it's going to be this hard when you come out of, um, you know, 80 and you realize there's not a lot of jobs in Auckland, first of all, for what we do. Um, it's all very, it, there's a lot of like graphic design jobs and like web design jobs if you want to do that. But then like if you really want to do VFX, um, you know, you do have to move out probably um, to like a to another country. Do you know what I mean? Um, so um, what I would recommend you doing, and this is also stuff that I told myself as well, is that um, you keep your um, scope wide. So focus on things that um, that isn't just VFX. Do you know what I mean? Like it's just your job. Do you know what I mean? It's really important to do other things in your life. So keep up your relationships with your family and your friends. And um, like for me, I did a lot of gaming. I made gaming videos as well. Um, so I kind of did that um, in my spare time as well, just to like, you know, and I, I worked part time too, of course, to stay lean, be practical. But then it's also important to have to balance out your life. Um, also, another point is, is that feature films, um, this, those studios are really, really big. Um, and they're always looking for young people to learn and keep up with the technology. Like I said before, technology is always evolving. So they're always going to be looking for young people with like spongy minds and, and they're going to learn all that. And then, um, you know, and then, and then they can produce um, work out of that. Um, and literally the hardest thing is finding a job outside, you know, finding, um, sorry, finding your first job at a studio um, is the hardest thing. But then once you do have that, once you do land that, it becomes a lot easier afterwards. And yeah, like I say, unemployment is very normal. So um, don't be too hard on yourself if you do find yourself in that position because like for my year group, right? Um, I was also in um, Tim's and Emily's year, uh, and Michaela as well. Was somehow a lot of um, a lot of my um, like people in my, in my year <laughs> turn out to do like postgrad and stuff which is really cool because now they're teaching and stuff which I know um but yeah like um for for most of my year group out, outside of us four that you guys know who graduated in 2018 um a lot of us actually ended up not doing um yeah like we some of some of them aren't doing vfx anything vfx related some are doing music some are into teaching even I thought that I was going into teaching because it was so hard for me to find a job for a whole year because um, I guess I'll get into that a little later. Um, like I couldn't find a job for a whole year and then I started to give up a bit. I, I lost a lot of passion to be honest. Um, and then um, um, I just got really lucky, got picked up by Weta because I still kept applying despite the fact that I was really um, not passionate about, I thought I wasn't passionate anymore because I just lost a lot of hope. Because a lot of the times you will also notice when you do apply for jobs in Auckland or any other place, I think, um, they just don't reply to you. It's very normal as well. And because that's exactly what I'm seeing with my um, year group as well. Like a lot of people, you apply to a company, they don't get back to you. And that's really normal. And you just have to live with the fact that you're getting ignored all the time. Um, and then somehow, um, you know, out of the, I, I applied for maybe 15, 20, and that's not even a big number. That's a really small number because that's, that just shows how like few opportunities there are. Um, 15, 20 of them, only I think two of them replied back to me and said that um, they, they, maybe they were full or like they, what I had wasn't um, what they were looking for. Um, yeah. And then I just find it really ironic after that, that where to pick me up 
because yeah but um you know but that 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 situation can definitely um happen to you as well maybe you get ignored by the most small studio you're like you I don't even want to work for you anyway because you're so small but then somehow later down the track you know if you keep working on your portfolio which is exactly what I did I just kept improving my portfolio um I got picked up by it, um a better studio do you know what I mean so that stuff you know it's it's never permanent um it's you just have to really persevere is the main thing um yeah and so while you don't have a job, definitely work part time as well, um, just to you know get in a little bit of money, still be practical. You still need experience as well. Just pick up whatever you can, work on your um, showreel and your portfolio in your spare time. Um, and then, like one of the good things is, as well is that since you have all the spare time in, in the world, you get to make whatever you want with any without any brief or assignment limitations. You also have Oh, yeah, yeah, you have all the time. I see that already. Um, but so what I did is that I think you guys saw I made, I, I did, you saw that like four, like, um, picture thing I had. Yeah, so that's what I did in my spare time um, last year. Um, I got to do what I wanted to do and what I wanted to explore um, for like all last year, really. And um, I, and because I was, because I started, because I want, I was able to do what I wanted to do without a brief on assignment, um, you know, it was a lot easier to produce more good quality work that way as well. Um, and another thing is what I did as well is that I, I went on Instagram and then I just like looked up um, some like 3D art accounts. Um, that it's really, I would highly recommend that you guys go on this yourself. Um, there are some really excellent 3D stuff out there that can really inspire us because um it's it's all very you know, up to date it's more modern do you know what I mean it's just more interesting so like um i would highly recommend you guys having a look if you're ever bored or if you're ever uninspired just have a look on instagram you can see all these amazing things that these other artists can do um and yeah success is not just found in the industry so of course you can be like a freelance artist just doing your own thing um only thing is of course money wise but then in terms of your art you're still very successful, you know, if you can make a big, maybe through Instagram instead or something like that. Um, uh, okay, so, just, yeah. Just, uh, Terry, just to compliment, come, um, come, you know, kind of like uh, comment on your previous notes that, um, you know, even 20 or 30 application is just few. Um, you know, the first, when I may, started my company with my brothers, Mm. Uh, our first, um, you know, outsource client, uh, I got, uh, we started working for a company in London and uh, how I got that, the, the story is that I contacted 300 companies oh and <laughs> yeah, and just 10, <laughs> 10 of them uh, set the meeting and, and communicated back with us out of 300. Oh my goodness. And just one of them started signing the contract and we started working for them. And, and that, um, you know, uh, yep. co collaboration lasted for a couple of years. So, yep. yeah, yeah, it's it's a long journey. It is. A, yeah, it really is. And the thing is, like, I, I before, like, when I was in uni, no one told us that. You would just think, you just come out of uni thinking, oh, you know, I'm, I'm fully qualified now. You know, I have a degree in this, do you know what I mean? But it, it really isn't like that because it's not about what you want anymore it's about what people want you know what they want what the companies want so it's it instantly becomes a lot more cold a lot more harsh and you just have to learn to adapt to that but oh my goodness 300 is massive i i was gonna give up anyway I, let's be real here like um i think jose knows but then i last year um it got to the point where i was just so fed up because i didn't want to move out of auckland either um, I didn't want to move out, out, you know, and not see my family. I, I didn't want to go to like US or Canada because I just thought that was way too far away. There are more, lots of, lots of entry roles there. If you guys look up um, some of the studios that are based in Canada and US, you will see that there are a lot more entry roles, which is more suitable for you guys. But I didn't want to do that because I thought that's risky. Um, so I instead, I wanted to do, I was going to, I was actually going to do a teaching course and I was halfway through the teaching course because teaching courses are usually quite early on in the year. And then a month after um, I applied to WEDA, because WEDA was actually my last um, job application. I made that year just to say, okay, at least I can say to myself, I tried for WEDA. 
because they also only had two entry roles for that year, that whole entire year, because I've been checking, obviously, I checked very often. Um, they they only had two entry roles, one for fur grooming, which I had no experience in, and one in um, for motion capture tracking, which is what Greg actually posted in the Facebook group. So that's how I knew about it. Um, and then, so I applied to that in December, um, which is again, timing because everyone was on holiday at that point when they posted it. So um, I, I, you know, I wasn't doing anything. <laughs> so I was lucky that I was able to apply. Um, I applied quite early as well. And then a month later, I was already doing the teaching course um, and then where to ask me for an interview. Um, and so that's how it worked out for me. I, I applied not expecting myself to get into it. I applied it to say, at least I tried, um, at least I tried, and then I can like carry on and move on to something else. So um, I'm definitely not the best example of, I'm not something to like really look up to. I never, I don't see myself as the most like passionate um, person, but I do think that the perseverance really pays off and dedication really pays off. It's not very glamorous. It's not glorious. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'm not, yeah, it's, I just want to be honest. It's not, it's not amazing and like how you would think it is. It's, it's just like reality. <laughs> but there, there's definitely practical solutions to overcoming all that. Anyway, so um, speaking of practical solutions, um, this is very important. This is very good. This is the VFX pipeline. Um, you will learn more about it, especially in year two. I pretty much learned most of this in year two. Um, you just need to know a little bit of everything. You don't need, to, you know, don't be too worried about it. I just want to use it as a reference because um, pretty much when you do make showreels, and this is the part of my presentation where I just start talking about how you can improve your showreel and what you should do when you do apply for jobs, um, is you pick a couple of things you like in the pipeline. For example, lighting, texturing, and mocap. Um, and then you make one minute show reels for these three things or whatever, or what, how much, however much time you have, you know, make as many show reels as you want, doesn't really matter. Um, but you want to kind of like really specifically dedicate that show reel to that one thing. Do you know what I mean? Because a lot of jobs, like the one before, um, asset artists, you're going to see, you can see kind of up here, I'm not sure if you can see, but it says animator. And then there's going to be stuff like texture artists or there's um, camera tracking or very specific things, compositing, rotoscoping, all that stuff. Um, it's kind of like, it will be a job title kind of similar to this pipeline, like to the um, to these um, kind of departments. Yeah, so you, like say if you're doing, if compositing, you'll be working in the, you know, compositing department, wow. Yeah, so um, my recommendation is pick the three that you like um, and then make sure it's specifically d dedicated to them. Um, and then, um, you should always have behind the scenes in your showreel. Um, and, you know, do, and the good way to do this is also to not be lazy with the behind the scenes in your assignments. So like for me, um, in I made, a, it, I mean, it was mandatory. I know in the assignments, like when I was doing mocap, um, you had to do behind the scenes. So um, I was actually able to take a lot of behind the scenes um, and slap that into my showreel for when I apply for mocap tracking at WIDA. So that actually became very useful um, in that way. Um, so, and also just like pros and cons of big studios, obviously big studios have high profile work um, and there's usually more entry roles, um, but then the cons are that you won't find any that is, you know, like, um, you know, in New Zealand, except for Weta, do you know me? but Weta doesn't have a lot of entry roles. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't bargain on it. Do you know what I mean? I wouldn't, I mean, and I wouldn't bet on it. I mean, like, I wouldn't really like build, like, you know, have that. You can you have these amazing dreams, do you know what I mean? But I don't hold on to them too tightly because you might just end up disappointing yourself. So that's why I kind of been telling you all this is because I don't want you guys to be super disappointed with yourself and just, you know, kind of realize that you just got to be really practical um, when it comes to job applications. Um, and yes, yeah, most studios are still great because even though they have less um, high profile work, um, they are a really good experience regardless. And they can be great stepping stones to reach your um, your further goals. Do you know what I mean? So you're not a failure if you don't get into a company straight away when you graduate. It can take like two, three, five years. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't really matter how long it takes. Do you know what I mean? As long as you persevere. Um, but I know a lot of people from Weta who, and I only reference Weta not because I want you guys to think, oh, Weta is like the only like the only thing. Like everyone, you know, everyone in AT I know, even in my year, they have this like big big awe with Weta, but that's only because Weta is the only thing in New Zealand. Do you know what I mean? Um, 
there is a good studio overall and compared to other VFX studios, but don't limit yourself. Do you know what I mean? Don't limit yourself to just think, oh, I only want to work for this. Like, have a look at all the other different companies and studios out there. Do you know what I mean? It's really important that you keep yourself versatile and don't limit yourself because if you lim the moment you limit yourself, that's when you're going to lose a lot of opportunities. Um, and there's not a lot of opportunities to really begin with. So you got to make the most out of every single one. Um, but um, yeah, so with small studios, it's a little bit easier for your show reels. Um, often, if you don't see that they have a job um, vacancy, so say that you don't, they don't have a job advertised, um, it's fine. You can still send them something because they you usually have a recruitment email that you can send your stuff to. Um, so you just want to send like a cover letter and a show reel to them um, and then um, let them know that you're really interested in working for the company. Um, and then if you are doing that, then you would probably want to keep your show reel quite broad. So just do a bit of do a bit of everything and do your best work for sure. Always keep doing your best work. Um, and um, yeah, also have behind the scenes in it um, and a contact in the show reel. So um, at the end of it, um, if you just look up showreels online as well, you might see this, but like at the end of a showreel, just put your phone number, put your name and like put your email in it. Um, it's just a, just a good thing to do is what kind of showreels um, are supposed to be like. Um, and then of course, you know, pros and cons of being in a small studio is that they are great experience and they're very likely to be closer to home. So there are lots of um, small studios dotted around Auckland that you can definitely apply to. Um, I'm just saying as well, <laughs> with my experience and also like seeing my people in my year group also doing the same thing, but you can definitely apply to them, but don't have the expectation that just because you apply that you'll get in or that they will even reply to you because it's just how it is sometimes. Um, but then, um, and then also, I mean, I don't want to make it any worse, but in small studios as well, you will get a little bit more responsibility, but um, in, in a way, more responsibility can be a pro just because you learn so much more that way and you gain such invaluable experience. Everything that you learn, you can take on to another project in the future. Um, and um, they have smaller profile work, but like advertising, but, you know, like advertising people still, a lot of people still see it, you know, like you know, there will be on bus stops and on TV and everything. Um, so, you know, it's not, it's not all that bad. Small studios are really great. I know a lot of people from Weta who came from small studios and everything. So um, they're a really good way to get into, um, you know, something bigger in the future. You just have to persevere, you know, do it for a couple of years and then you can leave. It's all good. Um, just more on jobs as well. Um, if they don't reply back to you, like say a small studio or whatever, or a big studio even, reapply to the studio every couple of months if they don't respond. Um, that's saying if they don't have a job vacancy, say you... Um, send the recruitment email and email and they don't reply to you you can just you know just reapply every couple of months so i say every three months be like okay that's um they don't reply to me that's fine because sometimes emails literally just get buried so like just don't worry about it just reapply and it's fine it's normal um and then you can also call the studio um to know that you're interested um and then for them to hear your voice and know that you're really interested to to he have even called them um can be really really useful so like you know go ahead and and do that too that's something that i probably should have done myself but um i was too shy to do it so that probably i probably missed out on some opportunities because i didn't call um so i would recommend you calling if you do get sick of it um get in an application as early as possible when i saw the weather application um first of all i was really surprised that it even had a vacancy open but um <laughs> i i got in there really early so i saw and then i I try to apply the day I saw it um, or the day after even, but yeah, try to get in as early as possible. Um, very often you would realize as well when you're looking for jobs, um, a lot of the time they will have jobs that were out like what, four months ago. Do you know what I mean? And those jobs, yeah, it's like for some reason they're up, but like you, I think you can still apply and definitely I would still say apply to them, but I, I think this, sometimes the studios are just lazy. The recruitment is just lazy and they don't take it down. And then um, you kind of waste your time applying. But I'd say just for luck, definitely try your luck and apply for it anyway. But very often it will be that they, you know, it's best to apply for jobs that are fresh, that are new. Um, also another thing, be prepared for interviews. And usually the interview that I had just 
they were very standard questions. It wasn't too difficult or anything. But um, just know as well, like one good news is that if you do get an interview from a studio, it probably it's probably a really good thing because um, it means you got the hardest bit done. The hardest bit done is getting them to notice your show reel because that is what is most important. Like um, so, after that in the interview, they just want to see that you are a normal person, <laughs> that you're not weird. Um, so you know, you just gotta sell yourself in the interview. Just seem be really positive, be really you know excited to learn and everything, and then um, I'm sure you do fine. Um, so interviews aren't the hard bit. Um, so you can just relax in that. Um, and then, um, yeah, and hopefully um, you get the job. But showreel um, is definitely the most important thing and that's the hardest bit to get noticed. Um, and another thing is try not to work for free. So there is like one mocap studio I know in Auckland, in Massey, that um, they like take applications for you to work for free. And I don't, I don't, I think that's a good idea for you guys like don't work for free you guys are definitely worth more than you think so um like if you do work for free and and sometimes in the case like of course for your mom or your dad or for, for a friend or a teacher or whatever that's that's all good but just at least have them cover your um, travel expenses and your food because um that's it's kind of like a law thing as well this is like a legal thing <clears throat> So I definitely um, recommend that you don't work for free, um, especially for someone you don't know. But if you do work for, th work for them for free, say you really do want the experience, or you really need the experience, definitely um, have them cover your travel expenses at least. Um, okay, another thing is, um, so with, I'm just talking, I've been talking a lot about artist roles, but there's definitely stuff like production management that you can definitely apply for. It still uses the degree, um, but it isn't a creative role. Um, so pretty much what production and management does is that they do scheduling. You still have to understand the pipeline, um, but then you don't, you're not necessarily the pe person behind the, um, like the creative side, the technical side of things. You're just there as scheduling. Um, it's still a full-time job um, and it's still using the degree. So that's for, that's something that you could possibly apply to as well. Um, and um, yeah, literally just getting your foot in the door is the hardest bit. So like I said, once you get into a studio, um, you'll be, it'll be a lot easier in the long run. Um, so at university, um, so this is just some tips for people who are in year one or two um, um, and maybe year three, because I think you guys already know what you would do for your capstone. So um, I think you guys will be set. But while you're at university, you know, three years goes by really quickly. You want to make the most out of your degree. So um, I would say definitely make the most out of student software licenses. So, you know, do the industry, you know, they're big and scary because um, they are industry level for a reason. Do you know what I mean? So obviously Maya is one that's mandatory, which is really good. Um, but there's Maya, Houdini, Nuke, Unreal Engine, Substance Painter, all these, like, uh, you don't have to know all of them. I definitely didn't know all of that. I'm just listing some, do you know what I mean? So like, um, it's, you know, like just learn them for sure. If you have some spare time, you don't have to be an expert in them. You don't have to know them as good as, you know, Maya Premier. You just need to like have an idea how to open it, you know, what the, some buttons are, how to do something. And that's good enough already. Um, so another thing is you might notice, uh, why is Maya so shit and how is it industry level? Um, because like I know Bifrost and a lot of them, um, default tools in Maya are really bad. Like um, if you try like the cracking or like try and, do your like physics space, you know, simulation stuff. Like Maya is not very good because um, it's their software isn't, but like what is good about Maya, it's a really good like proxy. So like, it's really good at like um, taking in a lot of software. It's very man, it's very like malleable is what I mean. It's very malleable. So like, it's like Windows versus like Apple. Do you know what I mean? Why Windows is so much better is because it's so much more, um, you can customize it so much more. Same with Maya. It's just a really good software where people can take it and then um, they, make their own um, software and put it into Maya, do you know what I mean? Use Maya as like a, as a, as a way to um, use that, use those tools. Um, so, because in each studio, like the reason why say um, a studio is so successful is because they do write their own software. It's all in-house software, which means that the, the studio hires software engineers and um, computer scientists to make these like softwares and they put it in um, through stuff like Maya and Houdini. Do you know what I mean? So that's why it's good to learn them just because it's good to know how to use the default. So then when you do go into a studio, you learn how to use their software um, as along with, with Maya. That's why it's so good, even though Maya itself is really bad. <laughs> um, so um, 
if you flop a project, say you got, you know, oh my God, to get a B minus, wow. Um, no one in the industry cares um, because literally they don't ask you about grades. Um, at least I know for Weta and, and New Zealand, they don't. I don't know about Asian countries, but I know for sure um, if you go apply to a Western country, they're not going to ask you for your grades. It doesn't matter unless you want to do postgrad. Um, learning and the process of doing the project is way more important than the outcome. Um, so, for example, what I did like in year one, when I was in year one, um, there was there was a choice between doing a 2D animation and doing a 3D like 3D walk. I chose to do the 3D walk because I've always had this in me, but I feel like learning is so much more important than just doing something I know I can do already. Like, of course, I can do a 2D animation, you know, it's just drawing some frames, you know what I mean? Like, I know I can do that already, but why not do the thing that is a little harder? And that really paid off because even though I got a really bad grade for that walk and like everyone's, everyone's 2D animations got like showcased on the TV and everything. And mine didn't because obviously it had a shitty 3D walk and it's, it looks so bad because it's your first, it's first time in mine and everything. But the process really paid off because in second year, the year after I was able to, um, um, I had an upper hand in Maya because I was more familiar with the software and I think that really paid off um, because in my, even in my show that I sent to Weta, um, I had a lot of year two work um, and that was because um, I was able to really make the most out of the software already at year two because um, in year one, I actually bothered to learn it. Um, even though I was given an easier kind of shortcut to get a better grade, I chose to do the harder stuff because at university, the main thing is that you learn. It's not about you know your grade it doesn't that doesn't it doesn't matter it's just like a reaffirmation that you're doing well that's it that's what a grade does it's just reassurance hey you're doing pretty good this looks pretty good that's it <laughs> um so if you're uncomfortable with it that's how you know you're doing something right um perseverance does pay off like i said it pays off for jobs as well and uh, i can't stress this enough don't limit yourself to just 2d animation or anything else don't limit yourself to just thinking, oh, I just want to do concept art. That's why I'm in this course. You're, that's, that's terrible. Don't do that. Because if you think about it, if you really look at it, and if you, like, there aren't a lot of jobs in the first place to do with concept art. I'm not, shitting, I'm not just shitting on concept art. I'm just saying, using that as an example. Um, because there's amazing concept art, of course. But then I know for a fact that there aren't a lot of concept art jobs. So you want to keep yourself versatile. Because if you really want to make the most out of a degree and actually get into the industry, you don't want to you don't want to limit yourself with something that is so hard to get into already. There's so few opportunities, especially for an entry role person. Um, it's probably better for you to maybe get into um, some other job, some other, um, and then slowly work your way up to um, concept art, you know, and to keep doing concept art in your spare time, for example, do you know what I mean? So um, that's something really big. You, d it, it, you do sometimes have to really work up to it, especially if your passion is in that. But if you're really passionate, definitely don't lose that and um, try to keep yourself updated regardless, you know, make an Instagram and put your, put your work in there so, you know, you don't, so your work is still seen and you can still show people and feel good about yourself because you're getting likes and stuff. Um, but yeah, like I said, grades really don't matter. And at the end of the day, only portfolio and showreel matters. And that's not a bad, that's a pretty good thing actually, because in my experience, my, <laughs> just this, I mean, this only really, I, like, I wouldn't recommend it to everyone, but for me, what happened was that my capstone was a piece of shit. I hate my capstone. Um, and uh, that's, that's coming very personally. I know Hussein is lovely and he doesn't think that, <laughs> but I know I, didn't enjoy my capstone. I thought I, I um, is I I try to use Houdini for it, and I don't regret that because I learned a lot a lot in Houdini because of that. Um, but I um, it definitely wasn't good enough in terms of the quality for a showreel. I thought, especially to send to Weta, I didn't have my showreel in my um, in in my uh like reel that I sent to Weta um because it was that bad. <laughs> but it's a fine because you can make up for it during your downtime because I wasn't doing anything. So I, yeah, I just let, you know, I just kind of made up for it. I'm um, doing what I wanted to do and make, making more professional looking work um, in my gap year. And then um, some other things just about the industry as well. Um, making computer science or software engineering friends is really good because you'll be meeting a lot of those kind of people within um, the, the studio once you get in there. Um, and also learning Linux and Python, um, you don't need to know uh, exactly, you don't have to be an expert in them. You don't have to actually know what, you don't have to know how to use it, but just know what they are as well. 
um, just know what Linux is, just know what Python is, just have a Google, just have, just get to know it. Just because they, these two things do come up quite often in job applications once you do start applying for jobs. Um, so yeah, just if you don't know what something is, do definitely have a Google. You don't have to be an expert in anything. You just need to know, have an idea of what it is. Um, and another thing is, yeah, it doesn't really matter what you do. It doesn't matter what pathway you get into whether it be animation, virtual effects, or gaming, because I know that's the three pathways, at least when I was in uni. Um, so, because in the long run, it doesn't matter what you do, because you can, all those skills that you learn from visual effects, for example, is definitely applicable to gaming and same with animation to visual effects and visual effects to animation, you know what I mean? Like they're all very, um, they all correlate. So like um, all the skills you learn, like for example, for visual effects, right, you make like a software, a so so software, my bad, like a soft simulation, like particles or something. It's definitely applicable to, gaming because all you need to do is you just turn you just put the soft the particle simulation into a game engine for example right that's literally the only difference and then maybe instead of for actual visual effects you just put it into like a premiere or after effects to composite it so that's a difference it's just like how it's expressed it's just expressed differently but still you're going to be working in maya for all three of them you know what i mean so that's why it's so transferable is because um the base um, core skills are still um, are all the same, really. Do you know what I mean? And that's why um, that's what you learn really in year one. Um, and again, yeah, what matters most is just your showreel. Um, and yeah, so that's <laughs> that's my rant. That's my that's what I have to offer. Um, this is something that happened to me. I just thought I'd end it in a more lighthearted note. Um, this is what happened to me when I was in year one doing mocap. Um, it was such a shit show, but um, I thought it was quite funny as well. Um, yeah, so this happened to me. And, you know, we all go through these tough times, um, you know, working with Maya and everything and the software and doesn't work out, but you just have to persevere. So, you know, that's I think that's the main thing to take out of it um, is, you know, if something bad happens it's not the end of the world you can always make up for it that's later so on great. i yeah. love it <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's great no i love i love um really bad um when things break it's kind of funny you know it's not it's not all that bad but yeah cool uh and can you guys see my screen am i is it oh, oh no it's ah oh, there we are okay and yeah, that's, that's, um, that's it. Like, um, I know it sounds really disheartening. I'm sorry if I, you know, like, <laughs> um, y like if you guys lost a lot of hope, um, but definitely I'm sure every single one of you ha are really excellent artists. You know I mean? You just really just have to persevere and be patient. That's the most important thing. Awesome. Great. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sherry. Um, I wish we were in one venue and we had like this nice clap for you, but like <laughs> we digitally clap for you. So any question? <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> so any, any question, anybody? So Albora asks, do you have an art account on Instagram? Uh, for me? Um, yeah, I do. Yes. Um, and I, it's, it's, um, personal though like I, i'm not going to share it out to you guys you guys can see it's a little you can see some of the work that i posted um in that like little banner thing that image thing that um hossein made um yeah but um uh, otherwise yeah i do and i think it's a really great way to just keep yourself keep your work out there yeah next question anybody so alice asks are there any free alternative graduate discounts to any useful software for after we graduate so we can continue making work. I can answer that before Cherry goes. Yes, uh, some of them. So for example, Houdini gives you a full commercial license for one year. So it means that you graduate with a $5,000 piece of application in your hand. So that's, uh, so like um, some companies hire graduates because they come with a license. So, you know, I remember when I was working in Toybox, we only had one Houdini license because it was expensive. Yes, some would do that. Do you know any other application, Jerry? Um, no, but I do know that you can still get Maya. Um, I think there's a Maya like um, 
it's pretty easy to sign up. I don't know how. Maybe maybe I still got the education license, but the education license doesn't actually um, like ask like it doesn't really ask exactly for your like when you graduate and stuff so i think i was still able to use maya and keep it updated and everything fine even when i was doing my gap year so at least you can still use maya which is nice yeah um, but, but you cannot make a commercial um, yeah, you cannot you know. make money out of those educational licenses. yeah but the houdini license that i mentioned some would offer uh, so like alumni they call it alumni license that you can make money out of that so Joseph asks, what is the best site to endorse your art? Most people say Instagram, but uh, is there anything else better than that? Uh, so uh, actually you answered yourself, Joseph, uh, ArtStation um, is one of the places that all artists and companies would look at that. ArtStation is a blog style uh, website dedicated for showcasing your, uh, you know, CG animation uh, design uh, portfolio. So I strongly recommend Art Station. What do you think, Cherry? Um, yeah, definitely. Um, I only said Instagram because um, for me, that's what worked for me because I thought it was a lot more, um, it's just as inspiring. Um, I never used Instagram personally anyway. I only I kind of just used it mostly for looking at um, things to inspire me. Um, so that's just how I use it. Um, but yeah, yeah, definitely our station. I know Behance is really good as well. Um, and if you want to do like for show reels, um, Vimeo is really good. It's a little bit more prof professional than YouTube and more clean. So yeah. Okay. Any other question, everybody? We had like more than 50 people show, you know, showing today for your um, talk, Cherry. That's yeah, great. Wonderful. Yeah, it's wonderful. So Paige asks, uh, do you think it's better to make separate, more specific show reels? Well, that's a very good question, actually, for different skills or one general show reel with all your work? You're going to find when you do apply for jobs later on, I think you're going to find that if you do a general show reel, because that's what I did as well. I just did a general show reel. Um, a lot of the jobs you advertise are very specific. So say um, it's only going to be for animation. It's only going to be for texturing. It's only going to be for lighting. It's only going to be for compositing. It's never going to be 3D generalist. You, it's, you're highly going to find a job. I've Actually, I don't think I've really even seen one myself. Um, like say it says 3D artists, but really what they want is just modeling. So you kind of want to do, that's what I mean. That's why it's really good to be specific about your showreel. That's why I recommend to do it. It's only a recommendation though, because maybe um, if you feel like your showreel get, definitely proves that you can do what they're looking for, say your, your showreel really proves that you can do texturing, um, then yeah, definitely use it to apply for a texturing job. But I just think you have a better advantage um, and a better edge if you cater it specifically to the job. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Johnson asked if you want to post your video experiments and animation VFX video platform would be a better choice, YouTube video or anything else? Vimeo. Um, one, of, one of all of them. <laughs> no, yeah. Um, yeah, like, um, yeah, Vimeo is good. Like, I think Hossein was the one who actually um, recommended video, Vimeo to me. So yeah. I would yeah, <laughs> To everyone for um, for show reels. So yeah. uh, Rosemary asks you. Sh you sounded quite cynical about <laughs> how yeah. difficult it is to find a job after university, and that the degree uh, AUT provides are not enough, much like a trade job. Did AUT help you significantly to find you a job? opportunities after you graduate mm, yeah no that's a really good yeah i'm sorry i do sound cynical um it, yeah it's it's hard to hide that the fact that it is really hard to find a job because i'm not the only one who experiences this like i said my whole class experienced this out of the 50 people that graduated um you know i think i don't even know except for me who the i'm the only one i know to be honest who got into a big studio um but that's saying that could just be my year group as well. Um, you can ask Emily and Michaela and Tim about that as well, because we're all in the same year group. You know, I'm sure they have, um, you know, they will have something similar. Um, but yeah, like AUT, definitely for mocap, AUT was brilliant in helping me do that. Um, I have everything to owe, you know, to AUT for getting me this job. Um, 
But um, in saying that as well, Media Design School um, is, uh, they, there's people from my team that also came from Media Design School. Um, so yeah, AET does definitely provide you with enough, but really, you know, at the end of, you, you're going to, I'm sure some of you guys have complained, like uh, a lot of this is self-learning and yeah, because most of it is going to be up to you. Do you know what I mean? It's not about if AET offers you enough, it's about if you have the determination, if you have, um, you know, the foresight to, um, you know, to, to, to do your own learning as well. Do you know what I mean? Like I, you know, the briefs are really good in general to like kind of give you an idea of what you um, really need to know. Like for example, I, when I was in year two, I did um, soft simulations and hard simulations. And that's a good, like, um, you know, that's a good kind of start. But then like, I'd always looking for more. So like, not just do soft, like do a hard simulation using the my default to tools. You know, I always go further. I'd always try, maybe I'll try using Houdini or maybe I'll try using like a, a third party plugin that was free and do it then. Do you know what I mean? So a lot of the learning is up to you. At the end of the day, you come out of AUT and like I said, it's not about your degree. It's not about your grades. It's about your showreel. So it's up to you to make a good showreel. Do you know what I mean? And that's exactly what I did during my gap year is that, I I just took my you know what I learned, and I t give a lot of credit to AUT, but also give a lot of credit to myself. Um, and you know you just keep you keep learning, you keep doing it um, until you get something good out of it. Yeah, very I valid think. points. Yes, uh, there's no there's no magic brush out there. AUT or any other institution yeah. is just a platform, and it's at the end of the day it's you. So there's no institution you get in and you come out as a as a brilliant mastermind without doing uh, your side, your work. Lucy asked if you are okay with speaking about it, why didn't you continue with a postgraduate degree? Do you think there are benefits? Yeah, this is a really touchy question. Um, for me, I didn't do it because, um, yeah, I wasn't comfortable spending another seven, eight K for postgrad where I know for postgrad, um, you know, it's research. Do you know what I mean? What is there to research when I don't know coding, when I don't know Python, when I don't know how to make the software myself? <clears throat> what is there to explore? Do you know what I mean? Because I'm definitely more of a technically driven person. Do you know what I mean? Um, so, like, I just didn't think for me there was anything offered for me because there's not a lot of, like, um, things. For, if I was to research, I won't do a technical thing. And then um, I just know that I don't have the skills for that. So why would I do it? Or you could go into a more theory concept based thing, but I just don't think theory <laughs> and concept based things are practical. And like, I just don't see myself writing like a 7K like word thesis on like some bullshit really, do you know what I mean? So like, yeah, like I just thought it was way more practical to just go into industry and start earning money immediately. Yeah, That's just so, my point of view, though. Yeah, it's a matter yeah. of, um, you know, your your approach. Jacob yeah. asks, with freelancing, is any places are that are always open for work or is just testing the waters? I don't get his question. So I think he is asking, is... Hey, Jacob, can you ask your question? You just, just turn on your mic and ask. I think that would make more sense. Oh, I was just wondering, like, with freelancing, is there, like, uh, like a lot of work for it, like, just small advertisement work, where there's just, like, yes. you make, like, one 3D asset for, like, a person or whatever? Yeah. Mm. Or is it more, like, uh, is, it, are they, is it harder to find, like, in general, like... Mm. Yeah, no, that's no um, good point. Um, I have the same question as um, too, to be honest, because freelancing is so because um, I never really did it myself because I like I say, I spent a year unemployed as in not really doing anything to do with the degree because I was doing um, part time instead of doing something else. Um, so I can't really answer that. I think Hossein would be better answering that. But what I can say is that, yeah, usually it would be for like one time things. Say you'd make an asset like a model for someone or you do the rigging for someone. Um, and then once you get that done, um, you get paid and that's it. And that's why it's really good to always keep a part time. Um, okay, but cool. yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, uh, you always can get what you have done before, Jacob. So if you have done a full uh, TV commercial by yourself or by like yourself and a couple of friends that you do freelancing with, you can get a job as a freelancer to finish a whole comprehensive like you know a whole project 
that was my job for a long time. So I was uh, making like I was being um, assigned a, a big project for so like and I was just dealing with a couple of I was managing with my resources and get that done. So it depends on your portfolio. Uh, feel, if you might have any question, guys, feel free to open your mic and ask or just type your question in the chat room. Everybody's all right? Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, Terry. Uh, amazing amount of um, information you put there. They were very um, useful, practical, and I'm sure that the third year students um, can benefit from it very much. So, um, Great. Uh, thank you so much. I know that it was your lunch break, and <laughs> I really, and I really appreciate that you you dedicated this time. So Cherry is a kind person as well. She's she has a very <laughs> kind heart. So so she said I I so this talk might be useful for people um, in my situation who were in my situation who are in my situation at the moment. So, oh, there are some other questions coming. Sorry, just to add on, Rosemary says again, just to add on how do, or Mr. Najafi, oh, my, my name is Hossein, <laughs> feel about future graduates if it's already difficult to find a job in this industry in, in the pre-COVID economy, if and how the current climate will climate will impact this uh, what do you think terry how the oh, current man. um yeah it's if anything i think it will definitely make it harder um yeah it's it's t the tough times yeah i'm and especially just not for like us for the design as well i know for a lot your whole year group who's graduating this year um, you guys have definitely have it pretty hard. Um, me and my friend was were just talking about this, like the graduates, like the job market is already so small and hard. Um, I do feel really bad for you guys. Um, but like I said, um, the one thing I do want you guys to take out of the, what I said is definitely just keep persevering. If you really want to um, do something that you love, um, it's definitely worth it. For me, like when I, I know I was going to get into teaching, I already had my mindset on teaching last year. Um, but like when now that I'm in the studio and that I am in now, like it's it's I I I would wake up every day and I'd be looking forward to do the work. Do you know what I mean? It's such an honor, it's such a pleasure to be there. It's so worth it. Like um, of course, like for me, my plan was that I do the teaching course, I get a full time job teaching, earn a bit of money, so I can pay my student loan, you know, and then um and then I can maybe get into um the stuff um you know, later on in my life, do you know I mean nothing is set that you have to get a job immediately after you do, you know, after you do the degree, once you finish it, do you know what I mean? You have time to always, you know, like I said, your show is all about you um, and what time and effort you put into it. So as long as you do that, um, you know, it's never too late to apply. Um, yeah, but definitely I'd say do it while you're still young because when you're young, you know, like when you're under 25 and your brain is still developing. So people people take that into account and they want to train young people up. So um, there's a little bit of pressure in that. But, you know, if it doesn't work out, it's never too late to um, go and pursue your dream either way. Um, yeah, just sometimes you just have to be a bit more practical. That's it. Okay, to answer yeah. Rosemary um, on my side, uh, yes, it's a global economical hard time. However, if you look at the statistics, um, the, the game companies are making three times more money now because people stay home and play games. Netflix and all the VOD, uh, video on demand platforms, they had a, 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 a humongous boost in their income because of the situation. So as a creative person, you have a very good chance of uh, growing your um, market. So like, I know that my friends are expanding their markets because of the current situation. So this is the kind of like the right program and the right time to be in. 
So Daniela asks, so if we go to Canada, is there a pretty good chance we can get, we can find an industry job after graduation? Daniela is Canadian, if I'm right. Uh, <laughs> Yes, Daniela, uh, the, the number of, so we have one giant companies in, in New Zealand and it's Weta. The others are all of them less than, well, around 100 or less. In Vancouver, uh, actually, another uh, industry guest um, that I'm going to invite is Esan. He is from Vancouver, actually and he has rigged um, some of the characters in Avengers. So, so he, he will talk about, you can ask him about um, the, the, the VFX market in Vancouver, which is much more vibrant than here. Yes, yep. more than um, 350 million people live on Northern America. So there must be a much larger market over there yeah there is um okay so that was one hour thank you so much so so uh, we uh we leave you to go and have your lunch and <laughs> <laughs> so thanks everybody uh that was a great talk it's getting recorded so in in any future if you want to go back and have a look at uh, the slides that Cherry has shown on her talk. Um, feel free to review that video that will be posted at the end of this, um, you know, um, talk soon in few minutes. So thank you so much, Cherry. Uh, do you have anything to add to it? And we no, wrap it no, up. No. Um, yeah. Thank you for coming and listening. Um, yeah. I'm sorry if it, it was like cynical and it was tough, but it's just good to be. That was real. That was yeah. real. Yeah, yeah, I just want I want everyone to be prepared because um, when you do face a situation, it's just better that you know you're prepared for it and you know how to overcome it and everything. So yeah, wishing you all the best. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Thank you so much. No worries. Have a Thank lovely so rest of the day, Cherry. Thank you so yep. much. You too. You too. Bye. Bye, everybody.